Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. You wrote this story, Martin, back at the beginning of September. Jeffrey Epstein lookalike spotted on uh, Epstein's uh, Caribbean island. And you can see the photo, hopefully quite clearly here. There's a man. This was shot by a drone. It looks suspiciously like Jeffrey Epstein. Mm-hmm. Mm. So this is the, the drone footage here. Was there further development on it? or? Well, the reason why I'm going through this again, I'm just playing the, the drone footage now, is because there was a massive spike in traffic to our website, to that article, over the past uh, two days. Oh, interesting. And so, the mainstream media, they do not talk about uh, Epstein's suicide anymore. It's, it's completely uh, disappeared. And... Mm. Also, who's disappeared, who uh, nobody's been able to track down, is Epstein's uh, madame, uh, Gillicine uh, Maxwell. She was the, the curer of all these uh, young girls, and her name came to providence in uh, Virginia Roberts, uh, one of Epstein's uh, victims, uh, in the, the court documents that uh, helped, uh, were unsealed by, by Mike Cernovich, uh, the uh, the alternate uh, media uh, personality and of course uh, all the hard work uh, by Julie Brown at the Miami Herald uh, called her a, a rogue honourable mainstream media journalist. Right. Mm. Well, this goes for four minutes there. But yeah. Uh, if you that... skip about a minute ahead you'll see the, the relevant footage because it is... Oh yes, here we go here. Yeah. No, 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 it's not there. It's about a minute ahead. Um, I would... I am a little bit iffy about... Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I'd like to see a timestamp on it to make sure that it was actually taken after his death and then it wasn't taken, you know. But uh, that that account, that particular account that's that shares that footage, there's rumours that it's actually run by... Um, uh, what's his name? For, uh, John McAfee. That guy is a badass. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, on the on the run from the U.S. Uh, government. Where, where was it again? It's one of those Latin American... Um, uh, Belize, that was it. Yes. Yeah, he's... He, sh um, he should have been the, the Libertarian Party nominee in 2016. I don't think he can return to the United States. <laughs> he's, he's probably... If, 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 if it's not the law that'll get him, there'll be... I'm sure there's numerous bounties on that man's head. Mm. Um, he is... A, he is yeah. a true badass. Like yeah. when he dies, hmm. I hope they make a really good movie about him. I hope he's writing an autobiography because, from what I've heard about that dude, he he leads a wild life. Um, and uh, the the reason why there was a lot of interest in this drone footage is because, amazingly, there was a photo snapped of Epstein's corpse uh, when it was uh, removed yes. uh, from the the Manhattan. Uh, correctional center and people not said you can see it here. Not the same yeah. I mean, he had died, uh, well, allegedly by yeah. strangling himself, but people have noticed the yeah, differences maybe, maybe there. there was a bit of swelling in his nose, so you could count that out, but how does the cartilage in, um, shape of your ear hmm. change? How does that happen? So the internet still remembers that uh, Epstein suicided in suspicious circumstances uh, most people either believe that he was assassinated or that he was uh, secretly uh, removed yeah well the other theory is that he, he was um they faked his death so that he could flee to antarctica or something that's one theory that i've heard that they've got some big uh you know how many people actually can go to antarctica Right. For starters, most people can't afford it. And uh, I saw a thing where uh, Epstein's jet, for some reason, made a made a f direct flight to Antarctica. What's up with that? Who who just randomly goes to Antarctica? And uh, Gilbertine Maxwell, she was she was spotted shortly after Epstein's death at a a, a burger joint uh, out in public in in Los Angeles. And it's funny the photographer like it's like she's posing with this burger. It's really weird. And during my preparation for the show, I uh, uh, Inside Edition, uh, you know the 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 tabloid. I can't I can't remember if it's Inside Edition or Teams. They had one of those celebrity tabloid. Uh, news programs. Uh, they did a segment where 
they had a Photoshop analyzer who looked at the photographs of uh, Guild of C. Maxwell at this burger joint and evidence of, of photo shopping. And your dad, if you're on the run for like, you're, you're now the, the world's most wanted woman now that uh, your boss is dead and yet you're just munching on burgers and pose for a photograph at why didn't that photographer call the police that's what i want to know <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know what goes on with these these elites they certainly they live in their own unique world that we peasants do not understand um it's all it's all a big pantomime really it's all smoke and mirrors and symbology and veiled meaning and we don't have the means or the understanding or the social status to have access to the knowledge to there was to decipher these things i mentioned on the uncuckables a couple of weeks back i saw because i follow the the libertarian uh alternate uh news uh, a creator, uh, wearechange.org, uh, they republished an article from uh, Mint Press News, uh, which uh, they spoke to a former Israeli intelligence uh, official, Ari Ben uh, Mesheni, who he confirmed in an interview to a, a CBS former presenter that yes, Jeffrey Epstein and Gilda C. Maxwell were uh, Mossad. Uh, operatives involved in a blackmail uh, operation of US uh, officials and yeah I mentioned that at the bottom of the article and uh, uh, there's well, probably what, people what specifically you said but the idea of him being a, a what's known as a brownstone operative um, and that's essentially someone who is uh, the, the Russians refer to it as compromise gathering evidence on somebody um, through honey trap operations or whatever to, to get uh, them, catch them doing something and then they can hold it over them. That's how power works. Power works through blackmail. Everyone's got blackmail on everybody else. And for people who think that this is just an anti-Semitic uh, conspiracy theory, uh, there'd be people in the chat who are old enough or people who've done their, their research to know that Gildersine Maxwell's father was Robert Maxwell, who in the 80s was a British media mogul and his uh media empire in uh late 1991 was about to go broke and uh, his uh, foreign editor was involved in some uh, dodgy foreign interference work uh, over in the the subcontinent and uh, he uh fell off his his yacht uh into the sea and died oh, and they recovered his his body and this was on a netflix documentary i saw this on a netflix documentary so you know if it's on netflix then it's not just some fringe crackpot right. alt-right conspiracy they explored the likelihood that he was assassinated by mossad because the crew on the ship were never questioned and it's alleged that the crew were uh, a mossad hit squad and he was buried in in israel robert maxwell and uh, all it was attended his funeral by a lot of uh, former Israeli intelligence uh, operatives and, and officers. And how interesting that almost 30 years later, his uh, daughter, because his media empire was dismantled after he died, it was into non-existence. But his daughter, she managed to, to latch herself on to this uh, pedophile billionaire procuring uh, these young girls and yeah, she. Uh, when Epstein dies, she has has vanished. She's taken, she's taken up the, uh, the the family business of gathering blackmail. It seems. Mm. So yeah, it's 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 hey, interesting. You remember, you remember when uh, Mossad did an assassination, uh, and one of the one of the passports, one of the people involved was a stolen Australian passport. Yes, that was back in in two thousand and nine. Uh, that, a great memory. Yeah, there's a bit of pressure on Israel at the the moment uh, uh, from Australia because they're trying to get. Uh, she was a, a principal of this Jewish Melbourne girls' school. She's currently in hiding in Israel. She claims she's too sick to uh, come back to face justice in Australia because she was covering up sexual abuse at the at the school. And yep. Uh, yep, yep. 
Dave Sharma from the, the, the Liberal Party, who, who represents uh, uh, Jews in Sydney, and Josh Burns uh, from the Labor Party represents Jews in Melbourne. They held a press conference today with uh, the, the vic uh, many of the victims uh, from uh, that Jewish girls' school saying that Israel needs to extradite her back to Australia. This is not a good look uh, for your country. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they extradited Cardinal Pell back to Australia. They tried to oh, say, well, no, he, he, to say he, he, he was too sick. He voluntarily came back. He he said he was too he, sick oh, to okay. testify at the, the Royal Commission into right. Inst So they did a video link uh, from Rome. But no, he came back voluntarily to to face uh, the charges. The, 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 the classic one is the Christopher Scase, who fled to one of those Caribbean islands... Uh, when he owed creditors and shareholders all this money and claimed he was <laughs> too sick to come back and he was in a, a wheelchair. You know, the old thing where they like have the oxygen mask because they're too sick. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, yeah. they, uh, in one movie I, I watched about mobsters, like there was, a, there was an Indian student that did that. There was an Indian student that killed somebody in a hit and run, fled back to India and he's they're still trying to extradite him. And he's he's tried the old oh I'm on crutches oh I'm so sick I'm mentally wasn't sick. wasn't he the one who said and... Australia yeah, Australia was too racist for him to get a fair trial yep. yeah I uh, remember yep. that yes no they don't uh, imprison um, Sudanese you know criminals or people alleged of crimes because yeah so apparently Australian court system is very racist but the thing I don't get with these people they spend their, they spend half their lives on the run from like from something when they, they end up spending more mental energy running away from the damn thing and instead of just facing the music. Like, Australia, the Australian prison system is pretty cushy from what I've heard. Like, better than, you know, some Thai prison or, or Bangladeshi or Indian prison or whatever. Just just face it, man. They tried to arrest him at his uh, at his wedding and then he, then he had a fainting spell or something. Like, come on, dude. Anyway... Now, people well, in the chat, I know that they will go and want to watch Dia's uh, live stream, so just yeah, let us know so how, how she's uh, going, because she may... Sometimes she does start on time, sometimes there there might be a delay, so just let us know when she's about to go live, and then we'll wrap it up here. But uh, there was a, a good news story today, and I'm going to uh, block uh, your face again, I'm sorry... Uh, Martin. Tell, there's an important comment here you need to uh, tell Steel to stop watching porn because of the buffering issues. <laughs> Come on, Steel. Well, it's actually Morgan who's in the office at the moment. Morgan. In the studio <laughs> office. So you I don't know what your... Morgan's up to. What are you up to, Morgan? Uh, I'm not showing you my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a post show report about <laughs> what it is. <laughs> yes. It better be dogs or something, cute dogs. But, but going back to uh, this uh, story today, this was by uh, Rebel... They're called Rebel News now, and well, even though Justin Trudeau is going to remain as Prime Minister and he's promised a, a social media crackdown, which, uh, wink wink, who do you think they have in mind uh, for that, uh, they were able to cover today that uh, Jessica Yanev, you know, the, the trans uh, gender... A uh, woman who wanted this uh, uh, salon to, to wax her, her balls. Wax balls, bigot. <laughs> yes, and who was also revealed as uh, wanting to host uh, a, a, a topless uh, underage uh, swim uh, party and Parents has been allowed. exposed That's uh, sauce. exposed as uh, messaging uh, young teenage girls about their, their period. She seemed to have quite a fascination with young girls menstrual uh cycles so she has lost her suit against uh the the female estheticians who refused her to wax uh, her penis and she's also been ordered to pay uh six thousand dollars in in compensation and costs uh, to the estheticians uh, uh since uh, losing the case because it said that uh, her uh Yaniv's complaint was uh, uh in, inconsistent and she was uh, uh, evasive and normally these Canadian Human Rights Commissions they're, uh, <laughs> they're the worst for upholding such complaints but common sense uh, prevailed and Yaniv uh, even though uh, she's under 30 she rides around in this uh, scooter. Uh, scooter I'm not sure if yeah. you've seen the, the Press for Truth 
uh, videos, uh, but it's really, it's really I've weird. Seen, I've seen footage of people confronting her, and, and her mother's nuts. Yeah, um, I honestly, why did they get rid of um, institutions like, you know, like the the nut house? Why did they get rid of that? Mm. Now, now these people are just among us, existing, burdening us with their presence. Mm. And a, a good uh, exposer of uh, Yanef's uh, creepiness uh, was Blair White, who's the, the I, I would call her the trans-traditionalist uh, YouTuber, who surprisingly, right. yeah, she's actually uh, become a, a online YouTube predator hunter, and she actually got uh, featured on... Uh, you all know who Chris Hansen is. He, I think most Australians uh, came to know who he was through the South Park episode about him. When he was on... Have a seat over there. Yeah, Have NBC Dateline. There. He had a infamous segment, uh, To Catch a Predator, where they... It was entrapment. They'd set, they'd set up uh, these stings uh, with this... It was called perverted justice, and, like, they'd get the police <laughs> to arrest them afterwards. And so they'd set it's up... It's not funny. I should yeah. laugh. The way they go about it, some of it's pretty funny. Yes, and so Chris Hansen would always appear when they thought they were going to meet this underage boy or girl, and say, so it's like, why don't you take a seat right over there? And they'd always take a seat, they and were... then he'd... You see the ones where they try and bolt, though. Yeah. That's, well, that's the funny one. The ones. segment ended when uh, one of the, uh, uh, the, the, the men who was featured there killed himself. But uh, Chris Hansen, he's, well, because it's the, the internet age, he's now got a, a YouTube stream and had uh, Blair White uh, as a guest, not just on the, the Jessica Yanif uh, uh, ex expose she did, but also uh, Onision, who is a, a popular... Uh, Train wreck? A uh, YouTuber, uh, <laughs> because uh, he and his uh, wife, they had a 16-year-old... A uh, fan live with them for a number of years and allegedly according to uh, this uh, girl when she turned 18 uh, Onision and his wife had sex with her so it was kind of like a grooming uh, operation and there's actually been quite a, uh, quite a number of these uh, YouTuber uh, predators. The the most uh, well known of it was uh, Austin Jones, who was convicted of, of child pornography uh, because he was soliciting uh, nudes from his underage uh, fans. Because of course these like cute young twenty ish male YouTubers they have Big all one these is emo bands. Yeah, they they have all uh, these. Uh, uh, you know, young teenage girl fans, and of course, I give everything to you, uh, mm -hmm. Onision or uh, Austin, and so uh, this is uh, has become a bit of a problem. Yeah, um, there was a case with there was there was a band, what uh, Blood on the Dance Floor, or some emo band where the guy was soliciting minors for ages, and yeah, depressing topic. Yes, which well, so it's an unfortunate note to, to end on. Uh, I'll say. Someone asked if I have a YouTube channel. I don't. I'm just a TU guy. Yes, I yeah, have time to run my own YouTube channel. Though. You're an, you're a TU exclusive. If you want to see uh, yeah. Martin, uh, subscribe to either the Unshackled main channel or the the Tim Wilms YouTube channel to see him on Wilms Front or the the Detonation channel because you're occasionally on. Uh, Steel Archer's Detonation program from time to time. Yes, I am. Watch Detonation. It's great. Yes, I am an S T R T U asset. Yeah. We have, what is it, a... What, what are those agreement? A exclusivity clause. <laughs> yes. No, hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm paid a six-figure salary. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hint. All right, I'll, I'll bid you good night, uh, Martin. We'll, we'll chat again soon, and we look forward to, to your article, which, which should be out uh, hopefully tonight. Yeah, yep. All right. Awesome. Great talking to you. Catch you later. God bless everybody. Bye bye. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.